Did you know that you can start PowerShell from within SSMS and navigate your SQL Server like it was a directory? Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed MVP Edition. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Today, I'm joined by Ben Miller. Ben, thanks so much for coming on Data Exposed. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, I uh, I have a company that does uh, managed services and and uh, architecture for SQL Server. Uh, we're called DBA Duck Consulting, and we help people with all sorts of things from high availability to DDA work to all sorts of things in SQL and then cloud, Azure and AWS and all good stuff. Cool. Amazing. Well, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about PowerShell and SQL Server and SSMS. And these are things that some people don't realize go together, but do. Uh, so I'd love to get your take first before we get into it on kind of that landscape and what you think folks should know. Yeah, PowerShell is um, a really good tool for sysadmins. They do a lot with uh, Windows and stuff like that. It's really great. Um, but there is this little known, I, I guess it's starting to become known, a uh, feature called SMO. And SMO is a library set that SSMS uses as well to manage SQL. Mm -hmm. And PowerShell can touch it because it's .NET. So PowerShell is an ecosystem that lets you load modules. And then there just so happens to be a SQL Server module that's written by Microsoft that lets you do a lot of things and has a PowerShell provider. So that's what we're going to talk about today is why you care about PowerShell as a DBA, because it's not native. People go, PowerShell? Like, I'm a DBA. I Management Studio is my tool. So it's going to be fun. Cool. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Why should I care and what do I need to know? Okay. So the first thing to talk about before we go is because uh, is the prerequisites in PowerShell um, for SSMS because SSMS is now uh, a lot more modern. They used to have a module called SQL PS and it still exists and still installed with SQL um, and engine. But the problem is, is that SQL Server Management Studio actually doesn't use that anymore. It wants to use the native PowerShell and the SQL Server module. So if it doesn't exist on the system, you need to put it on. And you should always plan on using the latest version. Because in SMO and PowerShell, um, the, it always can talk to the, the downward level. So if I install the latest version of SQL Server, it will have the version of SMO that can talk to 2008 and 2012 or 14. So you should never worry about oh my gosh, I, I'm going to, if I do the latest one, I won't be able to do anything. So you should always plan on using that. If it's not installed, SSMS will tell you it's not installed. So you'll know pretty quickly when it is, is needed. And the install module SQL Server is the command you'll use. The PowerShell gallery is where it comes from. And there is a uh, module out here. It'll tell you what the latest version is for SQL Server. And that's the one that gets installed. It even gives you the command to run it. The only piece of the command that I will re remind you is that if you are running this on a SQL server, the SQL PS module is still installed with the engine. So it will complain. PowerShell doesn't like to have two commandlets of the same name in two different modules. Because SQL PS is on the server, you need to use the allow clobber so that PowerShell will allow you to put that same command in a different module on that server. But as soon as you do the allow clobber, it will be okay. If you don't do the allow clobber, you'll see something like this. Lots of red, and they'll say the following commands are already on the system, so you'll know you made a mistake and didn't do allow clobber. So once you add the allow clobber, it will be happy. Got it. And one question from my side. So like, let's say I have SQL PS with my version of SQL Server installed, and I'm trying to add the latest version now I have both because of the allow clobber. Like, would you say use the 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 SQL Server one or use SQL PS or what, what should would, I use? Yeah, great question. You would always use the SQL Server module. The SQL PS one should never be used for anything. There's not as many commandlets and there's a lot more, um, there's a lot better support for the latest version of SMO in the SQL Server module, not in the SQL PS one. So that's the one you should use. Got it. Okay. So I got it. I used a loud clobber if needed. Now what do I do? Okay. So now we're going to take you through um, where you get access to this little fun tool once the SQL Server module is installed. If I right click on anything in Object Explorer, 
there is a start PowerShell. Now I'm saying anything, but you'll see when it doesn't apply, but this is the server. If I start PowerShell, I get put in the directory. It's, it's basically, let me explain the provider really quick. The provider itself in PowerShell is a way for SQL Server to be represented to you like a file system. We know C colon backslash users backslash. It's a path-like structure. Well, SQL Server provider has to present SQL to you in a path-like structure. So you'll see, here's my drive name, SQL Server, colon. There's my directory of SQL, which is the engine, and here's my server, trnag1, and default. Default is a reserved word because you can't skip a part of the path. So if you have a default instance, you can't just go right to the engine because there's a default. And you can't even install SQL with a with a instance called default. It will actually tell you no. So Fine. it is reserved all the way through the instance. So that's really nice. Um, but it drops me in the folder here. And if I do a directory here, you'll see that I have things, availability groups, credentials, databases. So it's a path-like structure. It does look a lot like this. See, there's databases. There's a database. There's tables. So each one of these has it. But we'll notice if I do system databases, right-click, there is no start PowerShell because there's no path to represent mm. in the provider. So it just doesn't have it. So you'll find really quickly which ones allow you to. Here's a start PowerShell for database. And I can do a directory here and show you that what, what is in my database. And it says, oh, there's log files and roles and all sorts of folders to get in there. We'll actually use it here in a minute. Tables is the same thing, start PowerShell. If I do a directory, you'll see and that I have tables. Uh, probably a, a silly question here. Like the way nope. I'm viewing this SQL Server like a path um, makes me feel like it's probably not going to work with Azure SQL Database or Azure SQL Manage Instance. Does it work? It doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> with Manage Instance, no, it won't work. Yeah, so okay. You have to be able to do SQL authentication or Windows authentication, but I believe it actually doesn't let you do an Azure thing. It detects whether it's Azure in the first place. So they haven't quite made it possible to use tokens or other things like that or managed accounts to get to SQL. So it is really an on-premise thing today. Um, whether they'll fix that or not, I don't really know because there's not been a whole lot of call for that. So good on question. On-premise or if you were running in a VM, then you could yep, in a VM it. Yeah, correct. Okay, got it. Good yeah. to know. Um, let's see. So, so the, the, the most important piece here, um, that you can understand, there's one other piece of this provider you need to understand. And that is that by default, I'm in the databases container. If I do a directory here, you'll notice something missing. You won't see any system databases because the provider has decided that that's going to implement a way for you not to care about system objects first, but there is a variable called SQL Server includes system objects, and it is false by default. So if you do a directory, it will not show you any system objects. But if I want to see them, I could do a directory dash force. I can be a Jedi for a moment and do force, and I can use the force. And now I, oh, look at that, I can see them. So it's kind of handy to kind of have a force without having to change that variable to be true. And that way you keep your, your system the way it wants. So if I do a dir, I just get the databases instead of system as well. So it's kind of handy. Um, but the most important thing to remember is that you won't, you just won't have start PowerShell everywhere. So you'll get used to where you have it. Start PowerShell exists in a, even in a table because there's things under a table like columns, indexes, full text indexes, foreign keys. So there are containers underneath there. So you can actually get e even in here and say constraints and oh, not, not constraints, keys. Oh, they didn't do it. So the, so the developers didn't allow you to do that. The columns are there are there because there's columns. Um, so everything doesn't have a start PowerShell, but, but most, for the most part, you can do that. So well, what I do once I was in there, like for any of these. Yep. yep that's what we're going to show you right now. Okay. We're going to actually take you through what you can do because to see them is nice, but what, right. what can I do as a DBA by right clicking and saying, you know, start PowerShell on my tables. So what we're going to be doing is we're, we're in the tables and we see them. Now, one thing that you could do, what if I wanted to script out all of these tables? Um, in, in Management Studio, I could either right click and do generate scripts, right? I could go tasks and generate scripts and do all that stuff. 
Or I could be in PowerShell and say, dir with a pipe and say, for each and do dollar sign underscore, which is representing the current item and do script. And all of a sudden I have scripts for all my tables. I can do that for databases. I can do that for any object in SQL. Most objects in SQL have a script prop or method that you can script it out. Now there's other things you can do to make the script more customizable, like include if not exists and stuff like that. But for general, I could even script these out into their individual files because I'm in a for each. So I could pipe this to add content and I could get them out into their individual files. So now I have a representation of all my tables and all the things I want in a folder in each file if I wanted to. So kind of cool, that's kind of nice. What if I wanted to remove all my tables called table something, I leave account alone. If I pipe this to, because it's a provider, it honors everything in PowerShell related to a file system. So if I do a where clause and say where, um, where the name is like table star. I only get, I get everything but account. And what if I wanted to remove them, remove item? That's the cup, the PowerShell command in a file system to remove an item. I can just remove them. And now look at that, they're gone. You've dropped all the tables. I dropped all the tables except I left account because oh. they're all named table. So, and the other thing, if I go back and put the tables back, let's go put the tables back. And then we'll go back into my PowerShell window and do a dir again. Oh, oh, they found them again. So it knows how to interrogate SQL to see if there's tables there. So really handy in that I want to remove things, but this is kind of demo-ish, right? But I wanted to show you that it acts like the file system. Here's where it gets really handy. If I'm in an, an availability group, which I am, so let's do the availability group here. I'm in a DBA tools AG. And I have databases in an AG and I'm on the secondary now and I want to suspend data movement because I'm going to patch. So if I want to suspend data movement, I normally would have to right click, click suspend data movement and then suspend it. And then I have to do that for all the databases. Now I only have five, that's fine. What if I have 50, 60, 70? That would be, oh, that would be a lot of work. And so you might not want to do that. What if I start PowerShell here and I do a directory It'll show me my availability groups, tell me it's synchronized, tell me that is suspended is false. I can just do, there is a command in the power in the SQL Server module called suspend-sql availability database. I do a dir, pipe it to suspend-sql availability database. And all of a sudden, they're all suspended. Nice. I come back and want to resume that. So I come back and do, oh, I'm just going to want to resume it. So I just change this to resume. And now they're all resumed. So very quick tool to quickly, I'm in the provider and I'm doing fun things and life is just sweet, right? So, that, so the advantage is that there is this ecosystem for this path-like structure that you get to use however you'd like to. And the other thing is this is a string. This is a path. So you could actually, whoops, you could actually take this path right here and substitute this a variable with that server name in it, a variable instance. And, and all of a sudden you have a way to get into the, the thing and get the item really quick. Okay. So the other thing I might want to do, let's go back to my management studio and I go back into my jobs and let's make sure that I go start PowerShell in my jobs. And in my jobs, I can do a dir and see my do something. What if I wanted to start these jobs? I do a dir and pipe to for each and then just say dot start. That just started all the jobs. If I go into my, my job activity monitor, there they are, they're start, they started and they ran. So my history shows that it started and ran. So Kind of, I mean, again, I wouldn't start all my jobs, but I could grab a job and start it with that, with that command. So really kind of handy there. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is just one more thing of the PowerShell provider that people don't know about, and that is the idea of a context. So I'm in the server context, and at this point, I do have to authenticate. Okay, so as soon as I get past this, 
As soon as I type dir, I have to authenticate. If I'm anywhere before this path, I don't have to authenticate. But what if I wanted to run a query? Invoke dash SQL CMD, which is the uh, query tool inside SQL. And I just wanted to say query. Select name from sysdatabases. It actually used the provider context. I'm in the server and it used my context where I am. I didn't have to specify the server instance. What if I'm in a database? Databases, AG database. And I wanted to invoke dash SQL CMD. And I just wanted to say, instead of sys databases, sys tables, which would have to be in a database. Right. Now I'm in a database context. So that's really kind of slick. It reaches down into the provider where I am and it actually executes based on my server and my database. So really handy tool uh, to do that. And the last thing I want to show you is that the context can really be nice. I can be in the databases and I can do a dir and I can see the databases. But what if I wanted to back them up? Dir type to backup dash SQL database. That's it. It's now backing oh. them up. Wow. So you if just I had a SQL Express yeah. instance, yeah, that's really cool. You can just use the provider context of where you are and directory for the backup and backup SQL database. It will use the default properties, but as you notice in the SQL backup folder, there's my databases backed up. Amazing. Amazing. So kind of nice. Cool. So I learned a lot, honestly, a lot of this stuff I've never seen before. Uh, so I've learned a lot. I really appreciate you bringing this to us, Ben. I'm sure our viewers did as well. Uh, you gave us a lot of tips and tricks for getting started, but any like final words of advice? Um, really, it is it is learning uh, what SMO does, the things you can do with SMO. That that really becomes the provider's power. Is whatever you can get item or get child item, that that is a full fidelity SMO object, which means you can drop it, you can uh, alter it, you can do anything you want. So learning those little pieces of SMO is going to be how you gain everything in this in this little world of of SMO and, and PowerShell. Amazing. Cool. Well, Ben, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, to our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead and leave it a like and leave us a comment and let us know what you think and what you learned that you didn't know and any other tips you might have. And we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.